Hello, everyone. Happy Friday. It is Friday, February 2nd, 2024. And we are here for another Friday Live. Um, I'm seeing in the chat, I don't think everybody saw my announcement that we're not doing the celebration today. So I'm sorry if that's why you're here. Um, we're going to flip it to next week. I had to change the date. I have a few last minute additions, which is fantastic. However, I need to do prep work ahead of uh, that live, and I did not, I wasn't able to do that this morning. So I'm just going to push that to next week. Um, I hope that's okay. Um, because, and you don't have to be live also for any of the prizes. So whether um, you can watch live next week or not, it's all good. Now, that being said, I thought we would do something fun. I think I'm going to start doing this going forward. We shall see. Um, but I am going to give away the cards that I'm making in today's live to um, however many I end up making. I'm planning on making three. We shall see if we get that done. But um, I will give away those cards to three of you guys. So when the video is over, you can leave a comment in the description. Uh, make sure that the live has ended so that it gives the people in the replay crew a chance as well. And then I will choose a winner. So I will talk more about that um, at the end of the video today. Let me see. Uh, Kim says, I've been holding back getting the better press. I have a feeling this is going to be a dangerous live for me. That's so funny. Hi, April. April, just a little note. I did see your message. I will get back to you um, this afternoon. <laughs> Let's see. Yes, yay for extra next Friday. Uh, I'm really happy about it. So it's going to be all a good thing. <laughs> Let's see. Um, yeah, I'm here to celebrate every week too. I just thought it would be fun if I gave away two days cards since it was kind of a bummer. And then I thought that I couldn't do the, the, uh, celebration live, I suppose. So I thought, you know what, we'll do that. And then maybe we'll just do it going forward. That'll be fun. So good to see everybody. I hope everybody's had a good week. Uh, Sarah says she loves the better press. Me too. This will give me a chance to move things around on my screen as well. Um, let's see. Do, do, do. All right. If anyone has any questions for me during the live, if you write question in all caps that gen or write my name in all caps, whatever, that generally helps it pop out at me a little bit. Um, if you are here watching and you want to chat with us, make sure you're subscribed to my channel. I do make it subscribers only. That keeps some of the trolls and all of that weirdness out of our chat. We don't want that. Um, and let's see. I think that's all. It's, Molly says should be getting her order today from Simon Says Stamp. She placed it during last week's live. Yay! I love that. Lots of loving the better press. Yeah, and Ginger, I like that. She said the better press is a glimmer is like a glimmer, but addictive. So I'm going to tell you guys why I'm using the better press today. Um, you can use lots of different products with the Tim Holtz Distress Watercolor uh, cr Pencils. I almost said crayons. These are not the crayons. He has lots of products. <laughs> uh, pencils. But I love them for better press images. And the reason I love these for better press images, I love them for a lot of things. So don't get me wrong. I like to use these for many, many things. But with better press, you cannot use your alcohol ink markers. So you don't, you don't, won't want to use your Copics, your Olos, your Spectrum Noirs, anything like that, because the ink that you need to use for better press images um, will bleed. So the press plates, if you press them, they work great for watercolor. And I love the crayons for that because I feel like the crayons make us all look like we are fantastic watercolorists. That is not my forte. I love the look. I've tried. I probably haven't dived into it enough because here's my rule. 
we can all get better at things the more we try. I don't try that hard. <laughs> but these make me look good. So I love that. Um, Carrie says she likes to use the Better Press for hot foiling. Absolutely. Let's see. So I am going to, real quick like here, I'm going to talk about the supplies. So sorry, my lights sometimes make it so it's so hard for me to see. Um, yes, and I'm going to flip to this because I think that will be easier too. So I am going to be using these main supplies today. The supplies I use are always listed and linked down in the description box here on YouTube. Sometimes I miss some things, so if you're not seeing something, definitely shout out at me and let me know. But we're going to use some of the um, Sunflower Better Press Plates from Spellbinders. This one is the, well, I'm going to get them all wrong. This one for sure is the bouquet, right? Oh, it's right there. Sunflower bouquet. Oh, let me get rid of this now. Now that I have put it up on the screen, we can get rid of it. Um, this one is the sunflower field. And this one is whatever that other one was that I just got rid of. Border. There we go. You know, the names of things get really close. And then we also have this awesome fancy sentiment set. So I'm going to use this as well for my card, my cards today. And let's just get started because I have lofty goals of getting a lot done. Tim has released sets four, five, and six. These are the new ones. I did pull out, and I know I only have these in two tins. I mixed one, two, and three into these tins. I'm going to have to figure out a new storage system. This is all my like pinks, reds, oranges, yellows, browns. This is all my greens, purples, and everything else basically. So now that I have the new colors, we're gonna have to figure out how to um, get these <laughs> to where I like them. We're gonna move those out of the way real quick. And we're going to grab our better press platform. Um, something else really quick about the watercolor pencils. This Prismacolor pencil sharpener is fantastic for sharpening them. Highly, highly recommend. Hello, Richard. Hi, Wilma. Let's see. Lots of excitement over new pencils. I'm happy to hear that. Molly says, uh, I love sunflowers. I guess that's why I live in the sunflower state. We sure do. <laughs> okay. This is the Better Press plate. And I sometimes like to um, do a little figuring out. These images would be fantastic for five by seven cards. I'm going to make A2, so four and a quarter by five and a half. I don't mind that they hang off a little bit, but I do want to figure out like, where do I want my image to fall on this panel? I also highly recommend the special, the paper from Spellbinders. It's the cotton card panel. I linked it below. I've got porcelain and bisque out here. Maybe I'll use the bisque instead. Yeah, let's use bisque. So what I'm gonna do is we're gonna figure out placement. And then I do it a little bit backwards here. I'm going to position it in this A2 slot. So can you? I figured out kind of how I want it to look. And now I'm going to place my press plate where it goes. Then I'm going to take a little repositionable tape. I like a couple of pieces. We'll just reuse it. And I can do, I'm probably gonna just try to keep it on these two sides maybe. I think it should be out of the way. So on our better press cover, I'm gonna tape this in place. What I love about the better press is it is a lot more forgiving than foiling. Oh, good. I'm so glad that you're excited about this. Yes, this is a beautiful press plate, Carrie. 
So we're going to use black today. There's lots of ink colors, but I want to have my image really shine. So I am going to use black because the ma magic is going to be coloring with these awesome Distress watercolor pencils. And I really only need to ink, I mean, most of the plate, but whatever is here within that A2 part of the image. And I want to make sure that I am getting my ink on here and I don't want my plate to move. So we just want to make sure we have everything that's going to be on the panel because this does not have a coordinating die. It really doesn't need it. It's huge. So it's going to take up most of the space. Then we're going to just place our cover right on and it pops in place. And let me grab my die cut machine. Don't be alarmed at the sounds of things going up going down. And I guess I could put myself on camera. We'll do that in a minute. A little thumbnail. I forgot. And then we're just going to, let me, oh my goodness, it's going to be one of those days where I drop everything, like a super case of the dropsies. And we're going to roll it right on through. And this is going to transfer and also create that letterpress look. Let's just move this. I'm probably not going to uh, move it back and forth every time, but I really wanted to. Oh, that's awesome. I'm going to say rip up ink pads. No, it doesn't rip up the ink pads. A uh, little Lane Cross with Rachel had really good luck with Distress Ink and she was surprised how good it looked. I love that. That is awesome. All right. And there is our beautiful image. I love it. It really takes up most of the panel. I kind of wish I'd put it a little bit further over. So I'm actually going to make one more. Sometimes that happens. We're gonna save that one though because I have an idea for that one later. I'm actually gonna have it hang more off of this side over here. Yep, I also second Jen Shirkus's classes. So check out her classes on coloring. That's awesome. All right, did I do that right? No. As I'm looking at it now, I'm like, no, that's not right. I'm gonna have to reevaluate where my tape goes. It's opposite. Let's do here and also here. I think that should hold it in place and I think that should stay out of the, yes. All right, I'm gonna ink it up one more time. The detail is incredible, but I want it to be a little, just a little bit more off the side of the panel, giving a little bit more white space. What I think I'm going to do with the one that I just did and I decide I'm, decided I'm not doing for the card panel, for that one, we are going to, um, or I will, probably not during the live, I'll die cut it into a shape. Like I'm thinking it would make a really fun heart shape that's all florals or something to that effect. Wouldn't that be pretty? Hi, Liz. Oh, thank you so much, Liz Johnson and Liz Reeves, both here. Diana has a great question. She wants to know what size Spellbinders Platinum I'm using. I am using the eight and a half. Uh, I have both. The eight and a half is my personal favorite. If you die cut anything full size or you think you will, I would highly suggest 
um, the full size. To me, it is completely worth it. There. There. Now I'm on the screen. Risa wants to know where she can find Jen's classes. I do not know the name of the website. So if you know exactly, I feel like it's Creative Chick. If Shari is here, I'll have Shari put it in the chat. I think she may have had a meeting, so we shall see. Oh, I like this so much better. Look at that. So it gives us some nice white space right there, which I personally kind of like. All right. Now, the thing about these inks, I don't want to tear my panel, so let me get that off. They are archival, and you really need to use an archival cleaner with them. So, and I lost my little foam thing for this, unfortunately. Here. I'm going to use this Hero Arts tool with some of my archival cleaner to clean this up. And don't worry about the mess. I'm going to take a baby wipe and clean that the rest of the way off. I have found that even with archival cleaner, my press plates stain. They aren't going to transfer that color to uh, the next project or anything, but I have found mine don't get all the way clean. I'm okay with that, but I just want you to be aware. All right. Oh, that's really stuck. I should get my little handle to pull that up wherever it might be. Who knows? <laughs> Let's see. Diana says, thank you. That helped me make up my mind. You're welcome. Yes. Emma said all of Jen's classes are on her site. If you, if anyone has the exact name, let me know. I can't think of it off the top of my head, of course. All right, let's do the next one. I feel like I've got just a zillion little things around piled up around me. <laughs> April, it's pulling hard. Join us in the paper crafting. I think that as crafters, we're all multi-crafters, right, everybody? Okay, I love this one. Here, I'm gonna, this one I have the cover sheet for. I think this is my favorite. I can't decide. Until we color them, I'm not exactly sure. But this is the sunflower field, and I'm going to do the same thing. I want to look at it. I'm going to look at it like this first, kind of see how much of it's falling off. And actually, I think I've nailed it. I like that. I'm going to shift that just a little. I want the stems to all be off the edge. All right. I like it. And we're going to center it into our A2 size. So even with a big press plate, you're still going to get the majority of the image, which I love. Put a little tape. What baby wipes? I always use pure and gentle and can't find them. Um, I am just using the generic kind from Walmart. There are the Equate Everyday Clean. I don't use them tons, but I have found that lately I've needed them. <laughs> Let's see. All right. Next. And I figured for today it would be good because I knew I'd make a cleaning mess. You want to clean it up in between each. So you kind of want to do, I know I was doing this, you want to do a swipe, kind of a swipe motion. It does help, especially look how detailed these press plates are. So, so detailed. Is there a place to get custom die cuts made so you can add the personalized one? Uh, I don't know. That one I don't know. 
I mean, I'm sure there are, but I just don't know what it would be. So if anybody knows about getting customized dies, Yeah, uh, there's places I know that do personalized stamps, but I don't know about personalized dies. I'm not going to pick my um, platinum up. And there's a lot of different places you can get. Ooh, look at that. Sorry, I got distracted. There's a lot of places you can get personalized stamps like on Etsy and stuff too. Oh my goodness. I think this is my favorite. I'm sorry. I got distracted by how beautiful this is. Mary says she agrees we're all multi-crafters. Creative Chick Co. Oh good, I was sort of right. Ha ha. Thank you. Thank you, Laura, for that. And I love this uh, Hero Art scrubber. You can just peel this off and wash it when you're done. It also is going to stain, but it'll be clean. And we're just going to clean this one up and we'll press the last one and then it's on to the magic of coloring. Oh, I am making a giant mess today. Well, that's all right. That's what we do when we craft, we make messes. Susan says now she's into stitching. <laughs> Jen also has YouTube, which has some distress pencils. Awesome. Okay. Next up, we're going to do this one right here. This is Sunflower Bouquet. Pull it off. Now, a couple of these do come with other greetings. I am going to use the one I showed you, I think. I think I want this one to go off the side too, just a tad. Like so. Let's straighten it just a little bit. Oh, it's a strong magnet. All right. Tim holds everything, Susan said. He does have a lot of good stuff. Oh, I did not clean this. Well, I'll take some stamp cleaner after a bit. All right. Just the archival cleaner is key to cleaning up this ink. And I have reused those same pieces of tape for all of the backgrounds. Oh, that's awesome, Sharon. Good to know. I'll make sure and tell Jen. I'm sure she'll love hearing that. Oh, Sandy, they would make great 5 by 7 cards. I just didn't want to make big cards today. <laughs> I don't make five by seven very often. Now I know some of you, that's kind of almost exclusively what you make. So I really love that these are sized that way. Okay, I think we are good to go. Let's do this one and then we'll do some greetings real quick and then we'll color. Donna says, checking in while working. Well, Donna, I'm so glad you did. 
Oh my word, how pretty is that? Oh, I love it. Let's hold on to this tape too because we're going to use it for our greetings. All right. I'm probably not going to do a super good clean here on camera for like my platform, but when I'm done with the live, I just want you to know that I'll go through with my cleaner and probably a cloth of some sort and really make sure it's nice and clean. Oh no, bracing for rain and snow. Is that in Colorado? I'm kind of over winter now. And I'm ready for spring. Okay, now, because I used the bisque um, cotton card, I'm going to use it for my greetings as well. And the reason being, here is the porcelain. I don't know if it shows. They're two different colors. So I really prefer my elements to all be the same. So that's the bisque and that's porcelain. Bisque is just kind of a little creamier. You know, I like both. Both have their places. And this one and the one before need to come to my house, Molly said. Yes, they're so pretty. And I'm a Kansas girl. Molly mentioned earlier she is too, so we're the sunflower state, so that's probably part of the part of the love there for me. <laughs> oh, raining rain coming over from California. Well, boo. Tabitha says question. But do you re-ink your archival ink that you're using right now often? Because I have a really hard time getting as much ink as you're getting. Uh, Tabitha, I haven't re-inked it at all yet, and I think it needs it. Uh, so I will be re-inking mine when I'm done today. But if you are having a hard time, first kind of do that little press and twist. That will help press that ink. For some reason, that motion helps get more ink onto these press plates. I don't know why, but I would re-ink yours. Um, if you're having a lot of trouble, I would for sure re-ink it. All right, and we're just going to do this now. Hello, Cassie. I also found the setting for anyone who's here on Wednesday evenings for stitching, and I kept forgetting to take the, the uh, comments off the screen because I can pop, up, pop them up on the screen now. I found the setting that will automatically take the comments off the screen after a certain amount of time. That was a delightful find this morning. I was like, oh, I knew there had to be a way. Okay, I'm actually going to just set this aside and I'll clean that a little bit later. And what I love, Spellbinders makes a coordinating die for a lot of their sets, but for this one, they do. Um, Let's see, and I love when there is either a stamp or a die or a better press set that d either does tons of greetings all at once and then the die, die cuts them all at once. This is my favorite thing. But I gotta get my die cut machine platform back out. I moved it out of the way. There it, we go. And we're just going to die cut. Okay, E. Briggs says here in the West where it is so dry, she has to re-ink often. That is so good to know. Thank you for sharing. And now we have tons of greetings, which I love. So look at this. 
ready to go. And I like that there's an assortment. Here are all of the greetings. So fun. All right, we're gonna zoom back in. Retro, isn't it great, Retro RX? I won't accidentally boot anybody, any guests off the screen. That's the goal. We're not going to do that anymore. That did happen during Wednesday night. It was accidental. All right. Let's start coloring, shall we? We're going to dive right on in. I'm so excited. Oh, this one's tight. There we go. I don't want them to all come flying. Oh, the font is so pretty. I agree. So, so, so pretty. Yep, exactly what I thought was going to happen. Mine don't stay looking this nice for very long. I think I'm going to try to mostly use new ones, but we may dip into the older ones too. Who knows? Scattered straw, that sounds like a good plan. Tea dye, mm, I don't know if I want to use tea dye or not. Yeah, I think I do. I was correct. Okay, we're going to start with that, I think. Oh, let's grab some greens. I want some mowed lawn. I also want, ooh, bundled sage, finally in a pencil. Oh, I like bundled sage. That's kind of greener than I want. I think we're going to try them all just for fun, okay? And probably go back to Rustic Wilderness because that's the one I want to use. Might use that in this actually. Please hold while I make some design choices. So sorry, everybody. Sometimes I'm not ex always sure. Hi, Livy. Oh, Melissa, that's awesome. Appreciate the gorgeous sunflowers. You lived in Kansas for nine years. That's wonderful. All right. Oh, and I probably need a dark. Yep, ground espresso. So I'm just going to. Oh, and then you can use. Paintbrushes dipped in water, but I personally love a water brush pen. So you just fill the detailer pen with water, if you've never used one before, and then it kind of flows out the tip. I find it works great, and it's my preference. I call it the lazy girl's way of watercolor. Uh... Susan said that she grew some sunflowers and they were very short compared. I think there are different varieties too. So I, I got to tell you, I have a brown thumb. So I'm probably not the best person to ask. Um, but I think there are different varieties. Okay, the great thing about these pencils. So I'm not even coloring very nice. That's This is called scribble coloring. This is what I call it where I just kind of go in and I add some color to the center of my flowers. That looks good. And then I take my water detailer and we're just gonna add color. We're gonna go in like so. And move it around. You can even mix it if you want to. Let's see, is it different? Is it a different look than using my Distress inks? Liz wants to know. You know, I think that I find when I use my Distress inks, I think that it's a little bit lighter, but you can build the intensity. I don't use my Distress inks for coloring a, a lot. You also do not have to use water. If you want to just color with these, you absolutely can. I would have to do a comparison and I will tell you I probably have not watercolored with my Distress inks in several years. 
So that's a good question and I definitely need to try that. So I generally kind of work in small areas, blend it out, and then I will go in and add color in another spot. I don't really want to use too much of this. This one is tea dye. Just here around the base, maybe a little. This is a little scattered straw. I also, where did that yell? Do I don't want to use that one? That's bright. Let me grab. Yes. Let me grab mustard seed from one of the previous because I think I'm going to like mustard seed and scattered straw the best. Yes, sure am. Don't be afraid to change your mind either. We'll just blend out anything that we don't like. You're welcome, Liz. And there's the magic. <laughs> oh, Erica, I did. Thank you so much for the congratulations. We are for sure going to have a little celebration. It was supposed to be today. If you did miss the beginning of the live, um, I did move it to next Friday. Um, due to a couple of last minute additions that I need to prep for. So. Excited about that. We're going to do some fun giveaways. All that kind of good stuff. This is Nicole's messy, messy coloring. So I know it doesn't look like it when I color with Zigs or Olos or Copics or anything like that because we're going to blend out all the color with our water brush pen. But see how none of the black outline is um, bleeding? I love that. It is waterproof. Let me show you. Let me look at this. Yep, waterproof, permanent, acid free. Okay, now I'm going to go in with some scattered straw just over the top a little bit, now near the base, for a little shading. Once anything is dry, as well, if you've already blended it out, you can go back in and add a little more color. Let's see. Question, have you used the Wink of Stella Clear instead of water pen? Does that add a shimmery? I have not used my Wink of Stella, oh my gosh, in a hot minute, but you definitely could and it would add shimmer for sure. You know, I used to use the Wink of, that's such a good question about using Wink of Stella. I'm pretty sure mine, I need a new one. I used to use it like daily. I bet you I haven't used that in several years either. Great question. That would be really, really pretty. And I'm just kind of trying to go here near the bases. I'm sure I'm missing things. We'll fill in. These are very, very detailed. All right, that looks good. Let's start coloring. I'm gonna start out at the tip and kind of work my way towards the base of each petal. I don't even really go directly, like petal by petal, I guess I should say. I'll mix it. And then we're just gonna blend out it doesn't have to be super time consuming or hard. I'm all about making it easy. Oh, Jan, that's, I did not know that. She said the Wink of Stella is alcohol based. I have not tried it. So here's the thing. If you're going to try something that you don't know, um, well, it's all playtime. Here's the thing, it's just paper. So we can make another one, but you might try it like on a scrap image. You know, the first panel I made didn't turn out great. I could always use that to try some coloring techniques, try some different types of product, 
see what works before I take it to the exact card that I'm doing. And that's always a great tip as well. If you are ever afraid that you know, something will ruin what you're working on. I usually try to do new techniques on a scrap piece of paper or a scrap panel, all of that good stuff. Okay, these are so pretty. I'm excited to start adding the greenery in because I think that's really going to make these shine. It'll set off the beauty of the yellow perfectly. Ginger said she wondered about it and looked it up. Water, oh, she says it. she looked it up and it contains water-based pigment ink. Um, I'm not going to compare during the live right now because I would have to get pencils out. Um, Sabrina wants me to compare, compare them with other pencils, like other watercolor pencils. I don't know if I have any. Are they soft? Yes, these are really, really soft to color with. In fact, I would recommend using a light hand. Don't grip them too hard. I broke this one in half. They're soft. So meaning I'm using a really light hand here with color and you can just kind of build the intensity up. I, but I have used other pencils and um, they are definitely harder than these. I just don't use a ton of watercolor products, period. Now that there's these, I don't really need to. Um, Richard says you could do some perfect pearls in your water. Does the water make the press in on the paper pop out? No, it doesn't. I don't use a ton of water though. This controls and doesn't put that much water out. And if you're worried about that, use a paintbrush dipped in water as well. You do not have to um, use a water brush pen if you are worried about controlling the amount of water. But no, I try not to put, I tr really try not to oversaturate too much. We're going to sharpen this. Ginger says, do you ever take your pencil to your brush just to add a grab? grab a bit of color. Yes. They do break kind of easy, Ginger says. Um, I think if you grip, I've learned, if you grip them too hard, they do. I have broken a couple. Look how nice and sharp that is. Much better. I should have done that to begin with because now I can get into all these little nooks and crannies and add color. Let's see. Where else do I want to go? No doubt I'll miss somewhere as I'm looking. Louisa says this sunflower is gorgeous. It is. I have not used my zigs in a while. I've kind of been on a not zig kick. I've actually not been on a coloring kick. So maybe it's coming back. I did coloring for Patreon the other day. So with Olos, so maybe. Louisa says, what sharpener do you use? I use the Prismacolor one. And this is what I use for anything, any pencils. Like when I use color, when I used to use colored pencils a lot, which I also don't use too much anymore. That would be fun. I really need to dig those back out. I keep thinking that. It is, it's a Prismacolor sharpener. Okay, so now we're just going to go in 
and start blending out some of the greenery. It does not have to be perfect, which I love. I'm going to add a little bit of color here and there. Trying to decide what color I should do first. Oh, I've missed some areas too. Can you use watercolor paper with the better press or do you have to use the cotton paper? Um, they recommend the cotton paper. I have not tried watercolor paper. You can try it. Um, there's no harm in trying. I know several people people have mentioned uh, when I've shared better press cards before that they have tried different paper and had good luck. So definitely try it. I have not tried it, so I can't personally speak to it, but you can definitely try. Let me see. The sharpener, I get it at Simon Says Stamp. In fact, it's kitted up with a lot of these new um, sets. If you buy any of these new sets, well, I shouldn't say any. But a lot of the new sets are kitted together and the sharpener comes with them. All right, am I happy with this? Do we think I need to figure out, oh, I see what I want to add a little color to right here. And, oh, I see more. This is always what happens. I start seeing all of the little areas I missed. That one needs sharpened. Crafty therapy, 100%. I need to figure out what color to do some of the little buds and things and I have no idea what this is. Hold while I contemplate what oh I see some more green some more leaves. Hmm and that needs to be green. This is very detailed. And I want to grab my brown. Question, are you finding some of your back lines getting diffused when the color goes over them? No, I, well, maybe some, I guess. I don't, it doesn't bother me. I just broke my pencil, by the way. I love when I'm live and I do things like that because I got it stuck. That's okay. It would have happened eventually anyway. Let me see. Oh, first let's blend this out. And I see I missed, now I don't, there we go. Uh, they might get diffused a little bit. That's a good question. I. It's not enough that it bothers me. All right, I want to do I'm going to do a little Uncharted Mariner and Weathered Wood for my vase. I still don't know what I'm going to do any of these little doohickeys. So if you have an idea of what color I should color those, pop it into the chat and let me know. And we're just going to kind of add color, a couple of shades of color around. Let's see. And yes, you can definitely stamp images too. This is just one of my favorite ways to color better press images. Since I can't use any alcohol ink markers. 
but you could use any kind of watercolor. I thought it would be fun today though because these are new and they're so pretty and I love that it kind of completes that whole distressed or distress watercolor pencil set. There we go. Pink or purple? Yep, I always like a pop of red, Richard. You and me both. I almost always choose red. And I'm sorry for all of my purple fans. If Libby's still here, please forgive me, Libby. <laughs> I hardly ever choose purple. I don't hate purple. I just hardly ever choose it. I think I might use festive berries um, because it's kind of a pinky red. Ooh, I like it. Yep, we're going to do that. I'm just going to add a little bit. Richard and I like the same thing. Always red. For sure. To me, a little red always makes it. I know everybody always wants the purple, but I don't. Sorry. Sorry, not sorry. Festive berries is a nice little bit. Yes, Nima, that's a great point. She said add red because today is go red for women's health. I like that. That is a good point. Okay. I feel like these are some petals I've missed. So I'm going to just go in. Also some greenery, I think. We're going to add that. Let's see what else Nicole may be missed. One. I'm going to do a little dark underneath. This is always the fun part. Okay, for my purple people, I probably am going to add a little bit. And Molly goes, I love purple, but yes, pop of red is good too. We're going to do a little purple up here. Because I hear you. And I want to do something different for, for this. And I think that will be pretty with the colors we have going on here. And I am sorry I have to keep looking at it so close. But along the side here, I'm not exactly sure. But I think the purple is going to look good. I like it already, but let's do a little blend. Oh yeah, I like that little bit of purple. I think that's pretty. And this is just the messy coloring. I know if you do a little bit more detailed, that's awesome. I'm more about just let's get it on there. Ta-da! And we have one down. So I'm gonna just set this one aside and we're gonna color another one. <laughs> Livy, you are still here. I added some purple for you. I oh, every time I color with with purple, Libby, I think of you every time. I miss working with you, Libby, <laughs> on a on a you know more regular basis. <laughs> All right, we're going to just, I'm going to probably step it up because I've been coloring for a while. I may only get a couple of these colored on camera, but I'd like to finish it. So I will, um, we're going to move on here in a bit. Yes, happy Friday. Oh no, snowing. Yeah, that's a no. I'm done now. I'm done with winter. My daughter said to me when Christmas was over, she was like, you know, it could it could be spring now. <laughs> oh, thanks, Libby. Okay. 
I'm a big fan of this kind of coloring. When you're not, don't have to be super specific. It's fantastic. Okay, there might be something I missed in the conversation. <laughs> That's making me laugh a little bit. Oh my goodness. I'm going to have to go back and look later. As I'm sitting here coloring, I look up and I see things and I'm like, oh, wonder what, what, I wonder what's happening. And if you're in the chat, you've probably already seen it. <laughs> Maybe you guys are following, on a little, following along a little bit closer. <laughs> oh my goodness. That's so funny. I need someone to read me the questions. I should have make my son come do it. Or tell me what's going on at least. Sometimes I get to coloring and I I don't forget that I'm live, but I forget. Does that make sense? <laughs> Cuz when I'm usually coloring, I'm just coloring along, listening to podcasts or music or something. That would be terrible if I stopped talking, though, wouldn't it? Well, maybe not. Oh, your puppy's up to no good. Okay. I kind of gathered that was probably what was going on. I was hoping. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Kim? Yeah. We had quite a lot. It's been so, it's been unseasonably warm and it's been fantastic. Like Franklin goes outside and he does not want to come in at all, which I just kind of let him. He meanders around sniffing everything. So happy. We've gone for walks, lots and lots of puppy walks because it's fantastic. And I'm just adding little bits and bobs of color. Well, it sounds like Minnesota and Montana have been rather dry, huh? Or maybe you live in areas that don't get a ton of snow. I see. The fur babies, April, they're napping. What's funny about this time of day, so when I would do the live at nine, they're wild. And that, that's, they're still that way. Um, and then in the evenings, they do have a tendency to also be a bit wild then too. That's like their wild times. This is nap time. This is actually really good if I don't want puppy interruptions. Or to chase down when they have things they shouldn't have. Yes, Susie, I did see that the groundhog said that we're supposed to have an early spring for what that's worth. Don't put tons of stock in that, but hopefully, because I'm here for it. All right, let's go in with a little bit lighter color just so we have something to blend. Let's be messy with our coloring. I almost feel like a little kid coloring like this. And remember, if you do not want to add water, you don't have to. You could for sure color this nice and not sloppy. <laughs> oh, Jessica, thank you. That's so nice of you. Nap time for yours too, April, for sure. Oh, Cheryl, really? Sounds like we're supposed to get rain this weekend. So I think this is kind of our last nice-ish day. Well, this is really nice today. So I definitely need to take the boys for a walk. Okay. So this is, I kind of colored it all messily. And then I'm going to go in and start blending out. And we're going to do the sunflowers first. And like I forgot to add color to this one, so I just pulled that color down. I will also take the tip of my marker. I usually have a cloth, but I don't know where it is. So I just use the back of my hand uh, to get some of that 
water off because I don't want the tip oversaturated. But we're going to do all the sunflowers and then we'll go in and do the greenery. That gives the flower part a chance to dry a little bit before we go next to it. We don't want to have um, any of that color kind of bleed into another area. Although I don't find that happens too much for me. Oh my goodness, Suki, Suki Scrap and Fox. I love that. She said she got her decorative pins from Vicki today. At decorative sewing pins. Um, her pins are lovely. I'm so happy. I will tell her. She will be thrilled. Let's go like that a little bit. They're so pretty. Yeah, I think these two press plates, the two that I chose to color, are my favorites. <laughs> but we're going to do the other one too. I'm just going to do it off camera so that we can finish these two all the way. Did Shari make it? Cassie said Shari. Oh, she did. So Shari must be here. I think Shari had a meeting. <laughs> Shari, I am still here, believe it or not. <laughs> still coloring the messy, the messy girl way. So if you're here for coloring messy, I got you. But once you add a little water to it, it looks fantastic. Look at those leaves. Oh, I love it. So, so pretty. Let's see. Oh, yes. Um, I, Jessica, I have changed my time for lives. So it's 1 p.m. Central for me. It just tends to work a little bit better with my schedule. And the added benefit that it's not super early for our West Coast friends. For anyone who can catch it live. I know not everyone can catch it live. And replay, we love you. So thank you, thank you. Linda says it almost needs a B. Oh, that would be a very fun addition. Can't think of exactly one I would want to use because it's going to have to be the right scale and style. I don't feel like cutesy goes very good with this, but I'm going to have to uh, research my stash because I like that idea. Also, it, I will take, like, I'll pick up color from somewhere that I've colored and I noticed I forgot to add some color to the stem and I just immediately pull it over there. You can always kind of pick up some of that ex extra color without having to recolor that area. I'll do that a lot. And let's hope that I don't miss anything. I'll have to look at it. Oh, it is so fun. Now, when it's dry, if you want to add more color anywhere, you totally can. Research the bees, 100%. Oh, good. Rachel said it's a good time for anyone in Europe because they're home from work for the day. I love that. Louisa says this is my kind of coloring. Okay, good. I know it's, you know, I also love precise coloring, but... When I'm watercoloring, this is the kind of coloring I like to do. All right, I am going to stop my coloring portion because I want to finish. I'm going to put the colors I used aside because in the description when I am finished today, I will list the exact colors I used. I wasn't exactly sure before I went live which ones I would want to use. So this is what we're doing. Okay, now... We're going to make them into cards. Oh, yep. Monique said it's an, another vote for a good time for Europe. I'm just thinking 
there's, it's never going to be like the perfect time for everyone, but hopefully it works good for the majority. All right. Oh, you know what? I lie. I don't want this map. I want to use this one. I am going, oh, I want to do this one first. We'll give that one a second more to dry. It's not very wet, but. Okay. I want to add a little bit of text over the top. I'm sure everyone is just shocked that I would want to do that, right? Shocked, shook to your core that I would want to add, right everyone? <laughs> Let me find the right color because I clearly didn't get out what I wanted to use. Okay, I think we're gonna go with a nice neutral. Oh, Sandy. Just stay tuned tomorrow. <laughs> and coming up, wink, wink. All right, I am going to use a little Gathered Twigs Distress Oxide. Now, I know it's scary after you have done an image and you've colored it and you're worried about how it's going to turn out. Here's my tip. What I like to do is I like to start with second generation stamping first. Because if you go full force and don't like it, it's a bummer. So I'm gonna stamp my first generation just on the back of my panel. And then I'm gonna take my second generation and that to me is perfect. going to add oopsies okay then let's do the other one super super simple text and hearts Nicole's signature <laughs> Sandy you do know me you do know me I want to add something to the background, and for me, text is almost where it's at. This is, oh, by the way, this is Simon Says Stamp, old uh, old letter. I love this one. It's I use it all the time. It is not new. It's been out for quite some time. That second generation is just going to fade off into the background so much nicer than first. And that way, it doesn't detract and take away from what you've created or what you've colored, pardon me. Okay, the next thing I'm gonna do then, we're not gonna put our gathered twigs away. I am going to ink the edges just a teeny tiny bit with the right blending brush. Have you ever messed up a panel? Uh, <laughs> Molly's asking that. Have you ever messed up a panel? I sure have. That is exactly why I usually do a second generation first. And if it's not dark enough, then I will go in and I will do, um, or I'll just stamp it again so that it's first generation stamping, if that makes sense. But yes, I have messed one, me I've messed more than one up. And it does stink, but also I figure it's just paper. Sometimes in our creative time, things don't always turn out the way we want. So I'm gonna go around the edges with a little bit of this gathered twigs as well. Now we're giving it a little bit of, we're, we're making it Tim Holtzy <laughs> with, the, with the distress, <laughs> I feel like. And I'm just, I just want those edges of my panel to be nice and, nice and muted but we're not gonna go all the way in. Isn't that pretty? It almost looks like an old postcard. Let's see. That text on the sunflower panel on the left is stunning. Oh, yay! I'm glad you love it. So we're just gonna go around this one now.
And I don't worry about going over what I have colored a little bit. Sometimes a lot of it. It just depends. Today we're just doing a little. But this is how I get around having a white background. And if you guys know me or have followed me for a while, you know I don't, I am not your plain white background kind of girl. I generally like a little something happening here. Oh, thank you, Jessica. Grungy, Shari said. Yes, grungy was the word I was looking for. Okay, now let's pick out some greetings. I'm going to use just saying hello and especially for you. Now, they definitely need to be grungified as well because they don't match now. So we're just going to take our same gathered twigs. I might just go right on. We'll see. Yeah, we're going to do it this way. I'm going to start off of my cardstock panel. Let's move up just a tiny bit. And we're going to go like so. Now, if you want to, you could now add splatter. I am not going to. I kind of like them just like this. Think we'll definitely add like some little pearls and things of that nature. Oops, things of that nature. But I don't think we'll probably do splatter today. I do think like a very fine black splatter would be real pretty though. something a little different. Okay. And I like that. I, whoops. Well, that went under the table, so we'll get that later. Shari, you don't have a glass mat. You do. You do need one because It's clean. <laughs> it's the best thing ever. All right, we need a little foam and we need some pretty pearls. Hold just one moment. All right. Thank you, Liz. Thank you, Ada and Athena and Terry. Thank you. You guys are so sweet. We're going to pop up our sentiment strip. And again, look at all these sentiment strips that we still have. So while I have this mess out, I could go and make several more of these to have on hand, which I think would be lovely. You know what? Let's just use a little T-square ruler. Hey, Shari, since you're in the chat now, would you mind adding a link to Jen Sharkis's, um website with her classes. We were talking about them earlier before you got here. And I know that you probably will have it handy. <laughs> we were talking about her coloring uh, classes and things like that. Oh, Ada, that's so cool. She said she once used a sunflower napkin and used Mod Podge on for a card and it almost looked like that. That is amazing. I love my little T-square ruler. We're lining things up. Oh, that's not centered. There we go. Okay, I love how simple these are. So simple, yet so pretty. Let's grab some pearls. Uh, am 
Emma, I don't know why it would filter it out. Huh. I just grabbed something. What did I grab? Gold Satin Baubles by Trinity Stamps. And we're going to give this bad boy a try. Do you even want to know how long I've had this? I'm embarrassed to tell you guys how long I've had this and not used it. A while. Like, I want to say three months or so. That's ridiculous. In fact, I hadn't even taken it out of the box until today. We're having real, real chat today with Nicole. Things that actually happen. I buy something and leave it in the box. I did that with something else and it kind of burned me, so I should really learn my lesson. Because it, the thing I got was kind of expensive. It was kind of broken. And not this. And nothing to do with with this craft at all. And I ended up, couldn't return it. All bad news. Oh, yay, Mary. That's so exciting. Oh, Emma, that's good to know. I'll go check it. Thank you for letting me know about that. I love this. Why did I wait so long to get this out of the box? You guys told me, you said, you, Nicole, oh, that's not tight at all. You told me I was going to love it. Those of you who have the glue press and you were right. And even one of my best friends told me that I was going to love it. Do you think I got it? And I said to her, I bought it. And then she even told me last week because I she said, I thought you were going to use that. And I said, yeah, I haven't got it out of the box yet. She goes, Nicole. <laughs> Sorry, Lori. <laughs> I, I think she she's out of town, so I'm sure she's not watching. I got in trouble. I like a little gold satin bobble. How about you guys? Oops. Wait, what is that? Oh, it is my sweet petunia glue press. And what you really are supposed to do, you put it in here in the little stand. The lid fits on here so you don't lose it. And it creates an airtight seal see that down in there that pink so that when you're working it just sets right here that's the other great thing so you don't have to put the cap in and out all the time you set it here and then you just work it's fantastic and again sort of mad at myself I did put a link to it down below but I'm kind of mad at myself for not have got not having got it out during the holiday crafting season. <laughs> yes, yeah, see, you guys are shouting at me in the chat. I love it. Ginger, I think you, or the, I remember you were one that told me. I'm almost certain. I mean, it's been an age ago that you guys said, Nicole, you really should get one. And I literally, after that live, went and bought one. And it has been sitting in the box. <laughs> Let's see, Liz says, they are a good, you know what? It's a great price. It's a great tool. Where would we be without our Misties? I ask, truly. And this is no different. This is super innovative. It's really cool. I am a huge fan. Okay, I will do this when we're done, but I'm gonna glue these to a card base, but that's it. Super, super amazing. I hope you guys have loved the video. I hope it maybe inspired you to try um, Tim's watercolor pencils if you haven't already, or tried the Better Press if you haven't already, or maybe just given you some new ideas 
of things that you can create. Now I wanna remind everyone, I'm gonna switch myself around and get rid of this, that when the live is over, if you will leave a comment um, like you normally would on any YouTube video down in the description, um, if you would like a chance to win one of these cards, please use the word sunflower somewhere in your description and I will use the random comment picker next Friday and I will announce it, the winners, in next Friday's live. And that is our 100K celebration live. So stay tuned for that. I hope you all will come back next week. You do not have to be there to win anything. It'll be like this where you'll have a chance to leave comments later on. So if you're busy or the time doesn't work for you, it's good for replay as well. So um, thank you guys again for joining me today. I hope you had a good time. I know I did. Um, I appreciate you all so much. If you haven't, please Give the video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. Please like the video, or that's liking it. Please subscribe to my channel. And I will see all of you in next week, next week's video. Bye, everyone. The supplies used in today's video are listed and linked below the video here on YouTube. Here is another project that you might be interested in. Please remember to like and subscribe and hit that notification bell to never miss a new live video. Thank you so much for joining me today and we'll catch you next time.